wanted to talk to you today about the use of English as an international language. Although English is considered uh, to be the international language, only 5% of the world are native speakers, and only an additional 20% uh, of people speak English in addition to their national language. So students the world over are taught English alongside their other academic subjects, yet most uh, teachers of English never themselves had to learn a second language. Can English teachers guide students accordingly, having never experienced the process of second language acquisition firsthand? I believe that it can be argued that learning any national language to the same level of fluency as one has in their native language is more difficult and time-consuming than learning math, chemistry, physics at the university level. Nevertheless, many people learn to read and write English flawlessly, but are shy in speaking or are difficult to understand when they do. In society, we're often judged by our ability to um, express ourselves verbally, and if we can't, we may come across as difficult to talk to or worse, even less intelligent. Some don't want to speak English as a matter of national pride. A lot of scientific research is published every year in languages other than English. Some scientists just don't want to ha um, cave into English language imperialism. So, which kind of leads to, leads to the question um, of, is the scientific community possibly missing out on important uh, stepping stones because of this? Using a national language as an international language is problematic because native speakers will always have superior ability to non-native speakers. Um, add to this the resentment for English language imperialism and the entire purpose of an international language, which is to allow us to communicate on equal footing, is completely lost. Okay, so as an example, in some countries, students can expect to study French for about 400 hours. By the end of this time, only about 10% of the students would pass a decent French exam, and not all of those would be understood in France. So, imagine being able to communicate with anyone on Earth in a concise and clear manner that is unaffected by where you or your compatriot in conversation are from on a completely level playing field. Esperanto is an international constructed language that is about four to 10 times easier to learn than most other languages. So you would expect to take about 40 to 80 hours of study to achieve a comparable level to 400 hours of French language study. Most languages have entire books devoted to mastering verb conjugations. Such a book would be completely unnecessary in Esperanto because every verb conjugates in exactly the same way. Uh, the language is phonetic, with every letter um, having only one sound, and there are only 16 grammar rules. It is composed of elements from many languages, making it a great gateway between languages. So by learning Esperanto, you get new vocabulary for free, much of which might be from another language that you're trying to learn. Uh, many studies show that learning Esperanto greatly accelerates learning other languages. Four primary schools in Britain under the supervision of the University of Manchester are currently teaching Esperanto in order to accelerate subsequent learning of foreign languages. The International Academy of Sciences San Marino is a scientific association. One of the principles that its members see insufficiently supported in other universities is the absence of cultural and language bias. In order to achieve their goal, um, they hold their conventions and school in Esperanto. Students write their thesis in Esperanto and a second language, usually their native language. Research papers are also written in two languages uh, to reduce the influence of language on the paper's logic. And quite a few university researchers are using Esperanto in their scientific work because of the precision, conciseness, and neutrality of the language. Today, there are an estimated two to three million Esperanto speakers worldwide and a disproportionate amount of Nobel Prize winners spoke Esperanto. For example, Robert Cecil, an architect of the League of Nations, Daniel Bovet, um, 1957 Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine, uh, he was a native Esperanto speaker, Wilhelm Ostwald, Nobel Prize in Chemistry, Reinhard Selten, winner of the 1994 Nobel uh, Memorial Prize in Economics, and he wrote two um, books um, on game theory in Esperanto, Alfred Fried, a recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize, and wrote a textbook in Esperanto, and William Ault, he was a three-time nominee for the Nobel Prize uh, for Literature. Since the advent of the internet, the majority of Esperanto speakers uh, learn the language through online tutorials, and in more recent years, uh, teaching websites like Lernu have become very popular. My personal Esperanto circle on Google Plus has over 200 people in it. So check out the neutral international language. It really is the better solution to the world's language problem. Thank you.